Hey guys, welcome to the Control Corner on Kayfabe TV. In this series we'll be discussing how to build control decks for different Magic the Gathering formats, starting with Mono Black Control for Standard. Let's have a look at the deck and options from the sideboard. So this Mono Black Control deck is a mid-range control deck. It does feature 16 creatures, so there's quite a bit of quite a few bodies that you can employ during the during the course of the game. I have seen a few lists online that are really similar to this. Um, we've just made a couple of adjustments based on our meta. Um, I, I happen to play in a quite an aggro heavy meta, so there's, there's a little bit more removal and there's a little, a little bit more in terms of dealing with um, creature swarm and tokens in particular. So we start with the top. Walking Blister, Gifted, Etherborn and Red Shade. Walking Blister, He's removal, he can, get, he can get gigantic in a in a long game. He's a great mana sink as as you get into kind of the stall turns. Um, he combines really well with Cabal Stronghold, which we're playing in the deck as well. Just a really efficient card. Playing four copies of Gifted Etherborn 2. <clears throat> so great body. 2-3 Death Touch, Lifelink. This is a fearsome blocker, a really good attacker. He can, he can chump block anything, really, and take it out. So really decent. And then Dread Shade is our sort of mid-range finisher. Dread Shade can get absolutely gigantic in combination again with Cabal Stronghold. A really decent card. I, I've been really impressed by how well this is played in this particular deck. I'm playing two copies of Gonti, Lord of Luxury, and Josu Vest, Lich Knight. So Gonti is a, a great sort of anti-control card. Um, even in the mirror match, this is a, a really decent card. Still got the death touch, pretty relevant there. Um, you get to look at the top four cards of target opponent's library, you can exile one of them face down, put the rest to the bottom of that library in any order, and for as long as that card remains, remains exiled, you can look at it and you can cast it and you can spend any mana to, to play it. So this can pick kind of the best of the top four cards uh, that your opponent has and really anything will give you value so you don't have to be too picky about it just pick the best of those top four as you would and um, and you'll get a little bit of value out of Gonti that way. Josu is an inter interesting kind of mid-range choice he's um, pretty efficient for his mana cost not not crazy good. Five, tough, five toughness is pretty valuable. Um, menace means that he can he kind of demands a little bit more of a board presence out of your opponent in order to deal with him, in order to block him. All that, and late game, he can absolutely win games for you. He creates 20 power on the board for your 10 mana. And he can end games really quickly. So a relevant finisher for us. So the instants and sorceries in this deck are pretty typical of a black deck in standard. We're playing four copies of Divest which is a great way of removing a, an artifact or a creature card on turn one. This will really give you an idea of how your opponent's deck is going to play as well. You get to look at their hand, um, get rid of the most, most threatening things straight away. Playing two copies main board of Fatal Push, we've got another two on the sideboard. This is great for dealing with uh, weenies, dealing with creature, uh, creature tokens and opposing ballistas as well. This can take care of that. We're playing three copies of Cast Down and four copies of Vraska's Contempt. Cast Down is a great card. It's rare and standard that we would get removal as cheap as this at instant speed. So yeah, you, you can't target legendary creatures with this, but still really decent removal. The majority of creatures being played as standard at the moment are non-legendary, and this can deal with all of those quite comfortably. Ruska's Contempt gives us our first hit at Planeswalker Control. It also gains you some life too. So again, instant speed, it's great. You can take out the most threatening creature or Planeswalker and get some life off it. Really decent. This deck only plays a handful of enchantments, but they're all pretty valuable to the deck. We've got two copies of Argyll's Bloodfast. This flips into Temple of Aklazots. It's there really just to draw you cards. Yes, you pay, commit a little bit of life to it, 
But the deck has a couple of ways of gaining that life back. And in turn, being able to draw a card at instant speed, fill your hand back up, is pretty valuable. All for two mana is a pretty decent card. Also playing three copies of Phyrexian Scriptures, one of my favourite cards from Dominaria. So this is here to deal with uh, opposing tokens, creature swarm, and in combination with cards like our Walking Ballista, pretty valuable. So this can, if you just got Walking Ballista out, this will put an additional counter on it, and the Ballista will survive the Wrath effect next turn anyway. If you have Walking Ballista and another creature in play, you can put the token and turn the other creature into an artifact, and it will wipe your opponent's board but not yours. So some cute plays you can do with this card. The sweep is there, again, mainly to deal with aggressive and token decks. And then the chapter 3 deals with your gifts matchup. So gifts at the moment is a, a solid choice for standard. There's a couple of sort of iterations of the deck that are being played quite a bit. This will deal with it. Gives you three pretty decent effects for four mana. Your opponent can kind of play around this, but I think that just the threat of this card being played is enough to make people... A little bit more conservative with their plays and that in turn works quite well for the kind of attritive nat nature of a mono black control deck. So for the lands we're playing well not that many really we've got three copies of Cabal Stronghold I have seen some list and I have tested playing four copies uh, I'm not sure about that I, I found that there was a couple of times where I really wanted to play a Dread Shade on turn three and having a Cabal Stronghold in my hand meant that I wasn't able to do that I think there's probably still an argument to playing four on this deck just because the value in this card in a long game is really high. So at the moment I'm playing three, might change to four later on, and I'd be really keen to hear your feedback on what you think might be the best way of kind of splitting those numbers up. Playing two copies of Field of Ruin to deal with opposing flip lands and strongholds, it's a good way of dealing with that. It'll also get you a basic swamp in the mix too. And we're playing 21 swamps, it's a total of 26 lands altogether for this deck. We want to make sure that we're hitting our fourth land on turn four, fifth land turn five. You need to have 25-26 you know, lands to make sure that you're going to be doing that consistently. So for the sideboard, there's some pretty obvious choices here. We've got Jurius for the control matchup, if you're playing blue-white or blue-black control. This is a great first turn play. This will, this will kind of set you up quite well for the next couple of turns. It always has value versus those kinds of decks. We've got another two copies of Fatal Push for the mono red, uh, mono red aggro deck. We also deal with opposing ballistas as well. We've got Knight of Malice against uh, white and white token decks. This is a, re a really good card versus Seal Away. They can't target it with this. It's an efficient body for its mana cost. I think it's uh, it probably needs a little bit more testing to, to see whether or not this needs to come in main board versus something like Gifted Etherborn. At the moment, I think Gifted Etherborn carries more value for you, but it's still a, a, a great card for that early game, particularly versus white. We've got two copies of Liliana that you can slot in versus the, the mid-range matchup, especially in long games that are, or even the mirror match actually, in games that are going to go a little bit long, Liliana is going to give you an army. Yes, it costs your deck, but you're going to be able to resurrect some of your creatures. And if you happen to get to an ultimate, you've got some decent board sweep there, in particular, sort of combined with Josu. Um, I really like Liliana. I, I was wanting to put her in main deck, but I think from the sideboard she's got a little bit of impact too. We're trying two copies of uh, Big DB and the sideboard to Demon Lord Bells and Lock. Um, I struggle a little bit with whether or not this guy should be main deck over a card like Gonti. Gonti's probably got a little bit more utility out of the board versus a control deck. Demon Lord Bells and Lock is an impact card no matter which deck you're playing against. They have to deal with them pretty quickly. And if he hits play and isn't countered, you're going to get value out of him straight away. So I think as, as I do a little bit more testing in the next couple of weeks, I'll probably find that DB is going to move into the main deck and Gonti will move from the main deck into the sideboard. And another sort of cute card that I like playing in black decks is Torment of Hailfire. 
This is kind of a win condition. It's kind of board sweep. It's kind of hand control. I just, I just like the card. The thought of having a massive Cabal Stronghold producing, you know, 10, 15 mana and then playing a Torment of Hellfire always appeals to me. So, hence this on the sideboard. I'm not exactly sure which deck we'd play this against main deck. Um, I think it has some value in the mid-range matchup. But really, it's in a deck that you want to go long in. Sorry, against a deck that you want to go long in, where you're going to have big turns, you're going to have long turns. Um, this gets immense value. So I've included a copy of the deck list in the video description. I'd really appreciate any comments or suggestions you guys have for any other cards that you would like to have seen included in the deck. Really happy to take your feedback on that. I'll be back again soon with some more Brawl and Control deck deck lists, as well as a little, probably a little bit of product opening and some other gaming stuff too. Thanks once again for checking out the video guys, really appreciate it, and we'll catch you on the next one.